Welcome back to the sometimes. Ooh, no, don't look at this. Don't look at this. Go over there. Welcome back to the sometimes build. Today, we're going back to work on the abandoned Subaru WRX wagon. I finally went and got a battery for it, so I'm not swapping batteries between the Red RS and the wagon anymore. So I'm gonna put the battery in that, and then we're gonna get them. We're gonna get the washing. We're gonna get all the tree sap off of it, get all the gunk off of the uh, side of the paint, try and get all the sap off the green, I'm looking at it right now, moss and everything on the back. So, join me. Good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome back to the channel. So today, working on the abandoned WRX, gonna get it cleaned up. Um, also, gonna I got one of those uh, head gasket tester kits. Thanks, Roscoe, for the tip on that. Um, I'm gonna put that on the... Uh, on the coolant and it, it, it changes color like it is a dye in it that changes color if there's exhaust present in the uh in the coolant while it's running so i'm gonna take we're gonna, gonna test that and gonna clean it up try and get it somewhat presentable again and then we'll see what what the next steps are so let's do it i wasn't even recording so i put the battery in i was surprised it had a go handle again last two batteries i got didn't have go handles you just had to lug them around had to get the vice grips to hold on the uh, battery terminal because I forgot I need to replace that. Note to self, buy a positive and negative battery terminal to replace it. Get it together. All right, what do you think we should work on first? I think we should put the tester on the uh, head gasket and see what's going on with that. Should probably turn it off though. So we were gonna test this Harbor Freight Maddox combustion leak test tester, but then I just saw down here, combustion leak test fluid sold separately. So we're just gonna clean the car today, I swear. All right, first things first, let's get the air out of this system. I next day ordered the combustion fluid, test fluid, so maybe at the end of this video, we will uh, test it. Whoa, look at that rust come out of this gun. Get all the air out of here. I think I'm gonna take a leaf blower to this first. There's a lot of junk on it. As you see first, all this air has to come out or it's a pain. Take the tip off. Oh, this, I also got the uh, 50, 50 foot rubber hose. Here, check this out. If you watch the pressure washer video, I got this 50 foot rubber hose on eBay. I think it was about $120, but I have the uh, pressure washer way over there and I can go fully around the car way over here. So it's not, it's not a pain anymore dealing with that stupid small hose. So definitely recommend get the long hose. This is also the short throw. I got this on Amazon. And then also got connection kits. So you kind of got to get a connection kit, the gun, and then the hose to make it all work together. Hopefully it maintains pressure throughout this whole hose, but we'll find out once it gets all the air out of this. We'll worry about the engine bay separately. Shoot, we need to get some degreaser. That's not coming off at all. All right, I need to find some Dawn Salt, but I'm gonna try this Car Pro Tar X. It's a tar remover, so we'll see what this does. If this even works. We're gonna also try some Dawn Dish Soap. I'll try it in an area over here, though. An area that I haven't messed with yet. Again, I'm just trying to get the top layer off. We're just trying to get the the main 
top level off. We'll get the clay out. We'll get the pad now to really do this. But again, not a tutorial. You're just watching me take this back from an abandoned WRX back to on the road again. Let's see what Just Dawn did to this mirror. And over here as well. All right, I gotta admit, Dawn worked better than anything. I mean, I've only tried that Car Pro tar remover, so it's not really the best thing, but we will uh, spray this car down in Dawn. Which makes sense, it's a grease remover, so it's gonna make all this stuff lift up. But it's a lot cheaper than that Car Pro stuff, so. We'll do a section at a time. I think that's a pretty good difference. I can, there's still a lot of dirt on there, of course. It's gonna take several washes, but this is just getting the top layer off. So far, so good. So let me do this to the whole car, and then I'll come back and uh, probably start attacking it with um, alcohol to get all of this uh, tree sap off of here. So I'll put y'all back a bit, let's do it. So we used a mix of uh, Dawn dish soap. I used a little bit of this uh, Car Pro Tarax, but I figured this is too expensive to be using on a whole car. So I used the uh, Dawn power spray until I ran out of that. Then I tried an engine degreaser. Don't do that. That was a bad idea. Then I ran out of Dawn power spray. So, but I mean, this side doesn't look terrible. It's got crap all over it right now, but it's got a lot of tree sap on it. It's almost like I need a 50 gallon drum and just dump it and let it soak. It's gonna take, it's gonna take a long time to get all this tree sap off, but I guess that starts today. So I won't bore you with too much uh, tree sap content because I know that has been played out on this channel and boring. So I'm going to work on that for a bit and I'll be back. All right, it is the next day here. And uh, again, thanks to Roscoe, I ordered this um, combustion test kit, which this thing keeps overflowing. I can't keep the, I can't keep the uh, coolant from overflowing in that reservoir. So we're gonna try our best. I've seen that this works even with, um, say you're sucking it from the exhaust, it will turn yellow if it's bad enough. So we will uh, fill this up to the test line. And so far it's still purple, but at the same time this keeps overflowing and I can't... Let's hope that doesn't do anything bad to the environment. I need to get more coolant out of here. And I need to get this fluid going 
to create a vacuum before it fills up too far. Again, not a mechanic. I'm gonna stick this on here and hopefully I can siphon out. All I'm doing is sucking coolant out. I don't have a turkey baster or I would do that. So I'm using this to suck the coolant out of the system. Maybe I have it low enough now to get a accurate temperature. So we're gonna fill this with the fluid. If this doesn't work, I'll just buy a turkey baster, it's fine. But I think it's gonna pull. Hey, the fan finally kicked on. All right, so it's low enough now because the, oh yeah, we're plenty low now. The uh, fan finally kicked on through the thermostat has opened up. So now we run this for 60 seconds. And it's still, the coolant level didn't rise. So we're not getting a, uh, we're not getting fluid in here from the coolant anymore. So I'm just gonna keep pulling air out of the system. And this is meant to be using a radiator. This radiator does not have a, uh, a fill valve, so I can't force this piece of rubber in too far without completely breaking it. So I'm just trying to hold it nice and tight. Here, come get a closer view. All right, so I'll take this off. I'll rinse it out and I'll put fresh fluid in. All right, we got fresh fluid here. There is not enough fluid in there to fill this thing. Oh, thermostat just opened again. It's pulling more fluid down. Cool, so it's nice and low. So I gotta hold it tight because it's not metal, so I can't force it in there. Two. So this, if there is a head gasket issue, this should pull those fumes from that hole, that leak in the head gasket, up to this point, and then it'll make this fluid in here turn yellow. And we'll test it on the exhaust afterwards. <laughs> it's staying up for... That car is barely hot, so I don't know. I guess it pulled it into the reservoir. I mean, it's fine, I'm gonna do it change later anyway, so it's just fluid. So now we're just going to do 60 of these. Still holding for 60 seconds. Water is, or the fluid is still purple. And I can't really pump it anymore because it's pulling a vacuum. See, the top of it's still locked in there. I mean, the top of it's still squeezed down, so it's, it's, it's holding a vacuum on the cooling system, but so far, nothing bad is coming through. I had to fill it up again, and every time the fan turns on, it starts pulling the um, coolant down into the system, so I will close this off because it did not change color. All right, now we're gonna do a test to see does it actually work. So if I put this over here and it sucks in exhaust, it should go yellow. See? Yellow. So if there wasn't a head gasket leak, according to this, it would have turned yellow immediately. Up front, but we pulled it from back here. So, what does this mean? What does this mean for the abandoned WRX? I think it means that the probability of it being a head gasket issue has now lowered. Um, it might just be that front, that front um, water pump that's leaking out of the weeping hole, meaning the water pump, the bearing failed inside, but potentially, probably, and the coolant's just leaking, burning, and then just getting so low that it overheats, um, but never actually overheated. So I ran a couple tests, as you saw, never turned yellow. Um, sometimes when the fan kicks on, it started pulling the, uh, 
the coolant back in that's weird i don't know if it's supposed to do that or what but um and you saw it definitely went yellow when i put it at the exhaust so it would have turned yellow immediately as soon as it got a little bit of that a um, little bit of that exhaust in the coolant so it's not leaking into the uh, combustion area so with that we can continue cleaning this car and then eventually do the uh, timing belt and the water pump and all that in the front and all the other projects along with that in the front but sounds like pretty good news if it's true i'm not i'm not putting my hopes in that yet but interesting thanks roscoe